The significance of the NES really starts with the events of the previous dominant console, the Atari 2600. While the classic system had its share of great games, it also suffered from a lack of quality control on Atari's part. This open structure allowed publishers to release countless games of questionable quality for the system. These games often functioned as little more than marketing material, as opposed to a genuine video game, and as a result, retailers were flooded with games that consumers simply weren't buying. This all seemed to culminate with the release of the Atari 2600's most high-profile game, E.T. Predicting that the demand for the game would be high, Atari manufactured far more copies of E.T. than it ended up selling, burning not only retailers, but also its own financial stability in the process. Suddenly, producing and selling video games became a huge risk, and the video game crash hit North America hard. So the video game crash happened. And, but in Japan, there's this little company called Nintendo. And, you know, they had been working on, you know, before they even got into games, they were a playing card manufacturer. They just made Hanafuda cards. The interesting thing is the Famicom, which was the Nintendo Entertainment System in Japan, actually really wasn't that successful initially. It took some time for the company to kind of discover and find, you know, how to sell it properly, how to properly market to the Japanese audience. So it eventually became successful and Nintendo was sort of like, okay, we can, we can bring this to North America. We can figure out a way to make video games popular again. So they had all these extra things that were kind of camouflaged, basically. No, this wasn't, this wasn't a video game entertainment system like the Atari. This was something else. This was something new. You, know, you had a robot. Atari didn't come with a robot. When I got my first NES, it had Rob, the robotic operating buddy, it came packed in. And, you know, I was a kid, and I kind of thought the idea of this robot there who helped you play games was actually kind of fun and exciting. The retailers saw this. It immediately convinced them that, okay, this is kind of different. This is something that's new, uh, something that people will be interested in, so let's put it on our store shelves. So with all of that in place, Nintendo released the Nintendo Entertainment System, first starting in New York, um, and then they eventually rolled it out to the rest of the country and it became very successful. But another key thing that uh, was sort of put in place by Nintendo that you know, is still around to this day is that this control mechanism to prevent publishers uh, from just releasing whatever they wanted for the system. So Nintendo built in this kind of lockout chip into the Nintendo Entertainment System that basically forced publishers to manufacture all their cartridges through Nintendo for them to play on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And this also put a limit on the amount of um, games that companies could publish over the course of the year. I forget what the number is, but you can only do so many each year. This kind of brought up all this weird uh, business stuff that started happening. So like publishers would start setting up secondary brands. So I believe Konami had the Ultra Games label um, Acclaim had the LJN label, and by bypassing Nintendo's rules, they were able to publish some games on their original brand and then publish the rest of their games on this other brand. But still, there were some companies that weren't really happy with this at all. So Atari basically formed this other company called Tengen, who uh, wanted to bypass Nintendo's lockout method. So they actually took the chip and they reverse engineered it and made it so that they could manufacture their own cartridges that would work on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I think when I really took notice that this was an actual issue was when Tengen put out a version of Tetris. I remember in particular I went to one, I think it was KB Toys. Uh, I just walked in and I asked for it and it was almost like you went in trying to like ask for drugs. That version just kind of disappeared from shelves and then there was the actual, there was the Nintendo version of Tetris. And it was just, it was very odd. And looking back, I know why now. This was totally illegal and it was a bad thing. <laughs> So I have very, very clear memories of this, this dude named Mario and how he just snowballed. He snowballed from basically a bit character in Donkey Kong to this, this juggernaut. It's, I think it's hard for um, younger gamers who maybe didn't grow up with the era of Super Mario Brothers to, to understand just how huge it was at the time. Once he started to become this big thing in the industry, of course, you, you know, then, like now, you, you become a cottage industry, so there's other things. So there was the TV show, which was kind of terrible. Tell Yoshi bedtime story now. Tell how Luigi finds Yoshi and Yoshi rescue princess. Oh, 
Okay, okay. I love the cartoon. I loved the song. It was like that swing your arms from side to side. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario. I, I ate up all that stuff. There was a cereal with like half Zelda, half Mario. There was the wizard, of course, this movie. That that movie was used by Nintendo just as a, as a pure kind of marketing ploy. I love the power glove. It's so bad. I think back then, video games was more common in all households because all my friends played. It didn't matter if there were guys or girls. Everyone was playing Super Mario. So we would go over to each other's houses and try to like pass all the levels and like, you know, watch the cartoons together. It was just everywhere. Video games like Super Mario Brothers kind of jumped in the mainstream there for a while. I mean, you saw mainstream news stories about it. Um, and all these sort of reports about it from news outlets that you wouldn't normally see. It's kind of crazy and you know people talk about you know video games are reaching a broader market now it's like I feel like they did back then and then kind of went away later on. I have so many favorite games on the NES. I Castlevania just huge fan of Castlevania. Even the Castlevania one was stupid hard. Mega Man was a huge one for me. Um, starting really with Mega Man 2, I think um, the first one was, was too hard for me, even by NES standards. Well, Mario Brothers Duck Hunt, that was obviously a hit. Uh, skeet shooting? It doesn't, they don't quack and make funny noises. That was fun though. I like Duck Hunt. And there's all kinds of great sports games too, and I think people really sell the NES short in that respect. I mean, Tecmo Bowl, and uh, Tecmo Super Bowl were just amazing football games and uh, you know RBI baseball. Played a lot of RBI baseball with my man Brett Saberhagen. Uh, that game and just like the ping of the ball off the bat. I have, I have this Pavlovian satisfaction because I really love that game a lot. Uh, Metroid was incredible. It created a, an amazing sense of atmosphere of being alone on this alien world. Lesser exciting moments in that platform's history as a comic fan were a lot of the Marvel titles from our friends at LJN. So I remember, you know, investing in a copy of the X-Men game for the NES. The game, okay, let's face it, it was not good. Anybody that played it, you feel my pain. Uh, they were completely unrecognizable X-Men because whoever you picked in the menu, they just wound up like a certain color sprite on, on the screen, just kind of going around blinking a lot. Some had power, some didn't, some just barreled through stuff like Colossus. It's terrible. Terrible. I think, you know, the, the lasting legacy of the NES is just that, you know, it, it revitalized the video game industry and I think it kind of set the structure in place for others to follow in Nintendo's success. If you look at the systems that all came after it, they emulate that game pad. You know, they have the buttons and the directional pad. They don't have a joystick. They don't, they're not using a keyboard like Commodore or, you know, joystick like the Atari. They, those systems were in the mold of the NES. At that time, the NES was not only the evolution of Nintendo as a company or the start of it, it was the evolution of games as an entertainment medium. Like games just would not be around without the NES. I mean, I grew up with the Intellivision, so I played like Burger Time and I played Pitfall. But then when I got an NES and it was like these it was worlds to explore. For the first time, it wasn't like a really abstract kind of thing. You know, you can tell that that's a little man in Pitfall, but the Mario character or the Samus character or even Link. You have more of a connection with the characters. I mean, the Atari had a lot of great games that you can play multiplayer as well, but it seemed pretty one-dimensional. After a while, you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again, and you're getting games that are kind of repetitive, just like in a different layout. But the Nintendo introduced like this entire world that like had storytelling and it had like great gameplay. Like Mario was just so much more advanced than Pitfall and Zelda was just, I mean you had, it was an open world game where you can just go wherever you want and it was just such a huge leap from what I was playing when I was a little younger. The Nintendo Entertainment System was just a really important device because it essentially brought console video games back to the forefront. I mean PC gaming is, you know, still going at this point, but console gaming Everyone thought that with the death of the Atari and the, you know, the flooding of the market of the really bad games and stuff, that just there wasn't any space for that sort of entertainment device. Um, and Nintendo decided to take a different approach and, you know, they won over retailers and they won over consumers. And they're a really big reason why the video game industry is as big as it is today. Mm -hmm.